the uh, Excel functions NPV, net present value, and IRR, internal rate of return. The first thing I'm going to do is name that cell. Instead of using I2, we are going to call it rate. The way I'm going to do it is select these two cells and go to formulas, create from selection. It's going to name it by the left column, which is uh, named uh, rate. If you use uh, Mac, use insert the menu, insert, name, create. So the value of this cell or the name of this cell, if you look at the name box, is right. Now what we are going to do is instead of using the Excel function, we are going to calculate manually the net present value of the investment that you see in column C. It's identical to the one you see in column E, where we are going to use the NPV function. So I'm going to use the calculations of... Uh, moving or uh, taking the values of the future and making them net for net present value. And I'm going to use the formula, I'm going to say equal the cash flow divided by one plus the rate. You see it's not using I2, it's using the name rate. To the power of time, in this case, it's going to be to the power of zero. Anything to the power of 0 is equal to 1, and minus 1,000 divided by 1 is going to give you minus 1,000. For the $100, it's going to divide it by 1.05 to the power of 1, 1.05 to the power of 2 for the second year, and so on and so forth. If you double-click, you get all of them. And then you can just double-click on the auto sum which is the sum of all these functions. And you're going to get the NPV, the net present value of this function. I'm going to use control tilde of view all formulas. You can also save formulas, show formulas. And then you'll see how it's uh, 1 plus the rate to the power of 0, to the power of 1, to the so on and so forth. Now I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to use the Excel function called NPV. I'm going to click here and I'm going to use the function NPV function, financial of course, and I click here and click N a couple of times until I get to the NPV. It's going to ask me for the rate, I'm going to click on the rate, and then I have to select the values. The NPV is the only function that we don't include time zero. All the other functions you're going to see later do include time zero. So I'm going to select all these times, all these values for the future uh, periods. And when you say OK, you're going to discover that the NPV of the future cash flows is $1,704.34. I'm going to click here and say equal all these present values of the future cash flows plus the original investment, which is minus 1,000, is going to give you the same NPV that we calculated using all the formulas the long way. And this is the function again. Now what I want to do is I want to show you how to calculate manually the IRR. I'm going to increase the percentage or the rate. I'm going to increase a couple of uh, decimals. And I'm going to ask myself, what is the rate that equates all the future cash flows to the original investment? Right now, with 5%, it gives me a positive NPV. Maybe with 6%, it gives me $637. So what I want to do is I want to just find out what is the rate that makes it equal to zero. The way I'm going to do it, I'm going to go to data. What if analysis, if you have a Mac, the what if analysis is on the left side of the screen. What if analysis, goal seek. What is that value, zero, that I'm seeking? And 
change this cell, what is the rate that is going to make it equal to zero? When you say okay, you're going to discover that 19.71% is the rate of return that makes all these cash flows equal to zero. I'm going to cancel it, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the function called IRR that basically is doing it instead of that very complicated long way with a function. So I'm going to say function, financial, IRR. What are the values? This time I do include the first period. Guess we don't use any more guess today because computers are fast enough. If you put a guess here, it's going to save you some time, but when you say okay, you're going to discover that the internal rate of return, and I'm going to increase the number of decimals, is 19.71%, which you've seen me doing it manually. So this is the, basically the IRR. Now that we know how to use the functions, let go, let's go to the sheet called Compare and compare these two investments. Which one of these investments gives me a higher NPV? If you were an investor and you had to choose between one of these investments, obviously you're going to use the one that gives you a higher NPV. I'm going to select these two as a formulas, create from selection. So now that I have the discount rate named, I'm going to use the function. I'm going to say function, financial NPV. What is the rate? This is the discount rate. What are the cash flows? These are the future cash flows. When you say OK, then all you have to do is add the initial investment, which is basically subtracting it. And the NPV of this investment is $219.06. If you're going to drag it to the right, you're going to get the same thing for the second investments, but obviously, if you had to compare between these two investments, the second one, investment B is uh, superior, it gives you an NPV of $373.75. Let's try one more example, just to repeat what we did before. I am going to select these two cells and name the uh, value in B2 as interest, create from selection, or if you have a Mac, insert name, create. Say OK. The reason I'm giving it different names in every cell is that I don't want by mistake to use the rate that is on another sheet. So one time I called it interest rate, the other one I'm going to call it rate, and so on and so forth. So I'm going to try and compare these two investments again. Function, NPV. What is the rate? This is the rate that we are using. What are the future cash flows? Here they are. I'm going to say OK. And add the negative cash flow that you're investing. And here you have, here you have the two investments. Investment or project A is better than project B. And the values were here before. I just wanted to show you one more time how to compare them. Now we are going to look at these two investments and see which ones of them have a higher IRR. I'm not going to name cell B2 because I'm not going to use the discount rate that I have there. So I'm going to calculate the two IRRs to compare these two investments. So I'm going to say function, financial, IRR, say OK. What are the values? If you recall, we said that we do include the first period for all other functions other than NPV. So I'm going to increase the number of decimals. So the internal rate of return of project A is 41.04% and of project 2 is 44.03%, so project B 
is uh, preferred over project A. Let's try one more example to use the NPV. If you see project one, this is the long way that I showed you in the beginning how to calculate. We are going to call this cell G2 R1 so that we have a different name for the rate. I'm going to go to formulas, create from selection, say OK. If you notice here, the NPV of uh, project one is $7,164.66. I'm going to compare the three projects. You know already what the value for this one is going to be. So I'm going to say a function, NPV. What is the rate? We're using this rate. What are the values? We are using all the future cash flows. And you're going to say OK. And then don't forget to add the initial investment. So these are the three NPVs of these three projects. You see them already down here. And project three is preferred or is the best of all three. Let's try and do the same thing with the IRR. Just that we have uh, four different projects. I'm going to click here and say function IRR. This time we take all the cash flows. I'm not sure if I want to include the zero or not. Say OK. Increase the number of decimals. Actually, I'm going to do it for all of them right now. Let me try this one. Let me make sure that we are doing the right thing. And you can try the other two. Try by yourself the extra, ex the extra exercises. We are going to show the solutions to the problems we had for the NPV and IRR exercises. The first thing we want to do on the sheet called NPV exercises is name cell V2 by the name you see in A2, we select the two cells, we go to formulas, create from selection. If you have a Mac, go to the menu, insert name create. When you say OK, this cell is going to be called interest rate. So we are going to solve the problem using formulas, not the function to calculate the cash flows of U0 through 5. And we're going to say equal the cash flow divided by 1 plus the rate to the power of time. Of course, for time 0, it's going to be 1 because anything to the power of 0 is equal to 1. And then if you select and drag it down, the NPV, let me change the size, the NPV is going to be equal to $214.69. Now we're going to use the NPV function. Don't forget that we cannot include year 0. So we are going to say function financial NPV the rate is the interest rate the values we are going to select the five future cash flows and we are going to obtain $1214.69 don't forget that you have to add to the NPV from the function, the initial $1,000.
So the MTV using the long way with the formulas and the function and XIRR are relatively new Excel functions where instead of having the cash flows in predetermined uh, uh, dates or predetermined intervals, we do have dates that are specified for specific cash flows. So in the example we have on the sheet called XNPV, in this workbook number two, XNPV and XIRR, we have different cash flows. And what we want to do is we want to calculate the net present value using all the cash flows with the times that you see on the left. Doing it manually is a very complex task. The first thing I do, or usually do, is I name this rate in E1 by the name you see in D1. So I'm going to use formulas, create from selections. So this cell from now on is going to be called rate. And we are going to use a function called XNPV. We're going to go to function, financial. And under the X, you're going to find XNPV returns the net present value for schedule of cash flows. The rate is the rate we are using here. The values, other than MPV, we always use the initial cash flow, is this one. And the dates related to these cash flows are these ones. And the NPV of this uh, project is $326.37. Let's go to the sheet called XIRR. And this time, the values are the same. What we want to know is the internal rate of return of uh, this example. We're going to go function XIRR. The values are these values. The dates are here, and we don't have to guess, I just say OK, and the internal rate of return, or the rate that makes the future cash flows equal to the initial investment is 12.38%. On the next sheet, you have a review question. Once you solve it, this is the solution the two problems we have for this uh, session about the XMPV and the XIRR. Uh, we are going to use the same uh, rate we used on the first sheet, which we called rate, and then we can just uh, try and solve the XMPV. So to solve the XMPV, we are going to use the function function XMPV. The rate is the rate we used on the other sheet, which is 12%. The values, these are the cash flows with an initial investment of $3 million. And then these are the dates where you see all these cash flows. And these are the cash flows. And the net present value of uh, this project is $494,230. Now what we can do is also use the XIRR, which is giving you the internal rate of return, when the cash flows are not in constant equal intervals. So we are going to use the function, and then we are going to say XIRR. The values are here. The dates are given, and we don't have to guess. It's going to be about 30, 30%. We're going to say OK, change it to percentage, and the internal rate of return with uh, the dates that you see on the left is 30.38%.